None of these makeup techniques are things that anyone should follow. <laughs> I'm gonna put that in. Disclaimer, I don't know how to do makeup. <laughs> Hello, my name is Erica. I've been cosplaying for apparently six years. You need your cosplay name oh. too. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Erica. <laughs> So, I'm Erica, I, my cosplay name is Ben Shenanigans, and I've been cosplaying for apparently six years. Uh, hello, my name is Jackie, I, I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> hello, my name is <laughs> Jackie Artist Raven, a person who has even fuck. Hi. Hi, my name is Jackie. Um, my cosplay name is Apris of the Artistry, and I've been cosplaying for about five years. So, when and how did you first get into cosplay? Your story is way better than mine. <laughs> I've always been a really artistic person. I've loved painting and dancing and I was really into Cirque du Soleil for a really long time back in high school and then my friend introduced me to cosplay and it had all of those same elements I was looking for with the wig styling and the crazy costumes and the performing aspect. This is sort of how I found cosplay. When I'm making a costume I'll go through I'll go through two different processes depending on which type of costume I'm making. If I'm making a costume for competitions, it's a lot more structured and I'll have everything written out of what has to be done and I'll be adding new elements to sort of up my costuming game. The costume's more casual, just to wear around the con to have fun. It'll be a bit more relaxed and not as stressed and I'll buy a lot more of the pieces rather than making them. Uh, the convention experience will differ for everyone and it depends what you're looking to get out of the convention. If you want to go to the convention to have a fun time with friends, normally that'll involve packing the car as full as physically possible. Tetris. Getting to the convention, checking into that hotel, trying to find a place that'll sit eight people for dinner Ooh, during that's rush hour. Really hard. <laughs> trying to finish your costume in the hotel before waking up. Because of course you didn't finish it. Who finishes their costume before the convention? The answer is nobody. <laughs> and depending on the day, you'll attend panels, you'll do photo shoots, you'll wander around the artist alley, we'll watch, they have events or shows in the evening. Sort of meeting up with your friends in the evening to try and do another eight person dinner as you add more people on. Mm -hmm. My favorite part about conventions is definitely competing. How do we start that? It's like, so the competition scene. <laughs> uh, yeah, competition, it's basically a competition to judge. We have judges who judge how well you've done. And in doing that, they also compare you to everybody else who's entered as well. But they judge you in tiers. So they level you in five, four, technically five tiers. Because you have juniors who are juniors just... Juniors don't count. Yeah, they're just kids. They'll get awards every time. But if they're too young to actually enter a competition, typically the parents help them. Novice, where it's again your first costume, your first comp, like not even your first competition, because it's it's all about quality when you um, enter in. So some people will enter in with incredibly elaborate costumes into novice, even because it's their first competition, even though they're like a professional seamstress. You win the novice award, and then you get to go to the next division, which is a journeyman, and then you get a couple of awards there. You go up to the next level, and then you go up to the master's level with the highest, which then allows you to, to do more advanced competitions. Getting awards or worth different points, you have um, general awards or worth one point. Um, best in class is two points. Yes. And then best in show is you bump up a division. Yes. So it's one point in novice. Once you win a novice award, you're in journeyman. Once you hit three uh, three points in journeyman, you go into artisan. Once you hit three points in artisan, you go to masters. And once you're in masters, ta-da! You won. You, you are, won cosplay. It, yeah, you won you cosplay. Are there forever. And it can get a little bit more complicated too with the international system. Yeah, and so the, that's our local system. Yeah, the local systems versus the international systems. The competition experience will definitely vary depending on the person who's entering, but typically you can find um, people who will sign up on the Friday night of the convention since they like to split up the registration between two days, half on the Friday night and half on the Saturday morning. If you're signing up on the Friday, then you don't have to worry about waking up at, at 5 o'clock in the morning. At 5 o'clock in the morning to get that spot with no guarantee that you're still going to get it because everyone else is also trying to register. I've totally never done that before. <laughs> nope, not me. You weren't delirious the entire day because we slept four hours the night before. <laughs> no, cosplay's fun. Yeah. Cosplay's great, guys. I recommend it. You will spend a lot of your convention waiting. If you're going to compete, you aren't going to have the time to go to Artist Alley or visit panels like you normally would because a lot of your time is going to be spent at the competition. Not just necessarily being on stage, but there's a lot that goes on before you even get to that stage part. 
you'll typically have to be in the green room by one o'clock, two o'clock. Depending on when the competition Depending happens, on yeah. the competition. So once you're in the green room, you're typically there for five to six hours because you have all of your pre-judging that happens before you're even on stage. So when you show up to the green room on the Saturday, you're typically going to be signing in, checking your audio. You'll check in with the stage ninjas as well. Those are people who will help you on stage. They can either be props or they can be people who you kill. Typically you murder them, yeah. They're very good furniture, they're very good dead bodies, and they're very good Genjis. So then you'll be separated into your dens. Typically they're five to ten people large, depending on how many people are competing and how many people they have to run the den because there's going to be at each den a den mother or a den parent. Um, these den parents will typically help you out through the process of your judging, getting your photo taken for references, and making sure you get on stage at your number. Once you're put in your <laughs> den, you'll be brought to the judges at some point. You'll show off your costume. The best way to do this is finding like a head down approach or like feet yeah. up to make sure you're not missing any of your costume pieces while you're explaining your costume. After that, you go back to your den, you make friends, you sit and wait for a couple of hours, and you go on stage, which is fun. You typically have a minute. Yeah. Depending on the convention, if you have more than three people, you can be given an extra 20 or 30 seconds in your performance. You have the option for a walk-on, which is walking on the stage, turning, showing your costume. Typically music, but you don't have to have it. Or there's a skit portion. So one of the biggest social media platforms for cosplayers is Instagram. <laughs> um, in your experience, what goes into creating this kind of like platform for yourself? There's a lot that goes into Instagram behind the scenes as well with all of their algorithms and the way that the app itself is run. Recently I found it's a little bit more difficult to grow your audience just because they seem to be adopting the same style as Facebook where they choose the posts that they want you to see. It's more beneficial for people who are posting frequently and those who are making social media their full-time job, so it's a little bit more difficult for hobbyists. Typically, you're gonna want good content. You don't want blurry photos. And you wanna be active too. You wanna make your friends online. You wanna engage with other people. Definitely noticed that recently that because I haven't had a lot of content to post because I'm waiting for some photos back from photographers and there's a little bit of a lull in the convention season activity will also drop because you're not getting those constant photos back. People who are making cosplay their full-time job are taking that time to be posting every day. It's definitely a lot more difficult if you're not making cosplay your full-time job because you have school, you have work, you have a life outside of cosplay. Um, cosplay for me especially is still a hobby. It's something I do because I love it and it's fun and that definitely adds a lot of stress when the people who are able to put in all that extra work and time and this is their professional business, you see their posts more than the thousands of people who are just doing this as a hobby so you're not seeing your friends posts as much which is really discouraging. Networking is definitely an important part of cosplaying because it's something you will need if you want to grow your brand or grow yourself as a cosplayer you need to be involved in the community specifically. It's also a great way to make friends. So do you find that it's ever kind of stressful to like approach new people in the community? It definitely is, especially with having that hierarchy with competitions mm -hmm. where people will see themselves as a better cosplayer than someone else. Well, and you see someone being in a higher level than you and you're immediately horrified that they're suddenly a this scary incredible person. scary person when in, it, again, it comes down to it, they're dressing like a cartoon character just like you are. My, I have two favorite cosplays. My favorite cosplay because of the character is definitely Rose Quartz in her full ball gown. It's because it's just so much fun to wear and it's a huge ball gown and it's poofy and it's fun and children love seeing it and the wig is huge. It's just such a fun time. But my favorite cosplay to wear for comfort is my little sister cosplay from Bioshock because it's comfortable and it's really well made and it's something I'm extremely proud of and I can just casually wear it without having to stress about being uncomfortable at the convention. Hey Jackie, is that an award-winning costume? That is an award-winning costume, Erica. <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes! Am I gonna become a news cat as well? <laughs> what the hell? <coughs> wow. Thanks, you guys.